Whether you're running your own e-commerce campaigns or you're managing e-commerce campaigns for a client, it's crucial to understand the data that will ultimately determine how profitable your campaigns are. Google Analytics is a very powerful tool that will help you do that, but there are times that analytics reports seem to conflict with each other and it makes it very difficult to make sense of the data you see in those reports. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through a couple of those scenarios in a live client account, and I'll show you exactly how to find the correct data and reports you'll need to understand ROI and ultimately make the best marketing decisions. Let's dive right in. So I'm here in the analytics account of a new client of ours, and the first thing I wanna do is understand how their AdWords campaigns have been performing. The date range I have selected is from the beginning of 2015 until today, July 4th. I know that this client has his AdWords and Analytics accounts already linked, so I want to take a look at some AdWords reports within Google Analytics. To do this, I'll use the panel on the left-hand side to navigate to the Acquisitions drop-down menu. Then we'll want to open up the AdWords sub-tab, which over here is already opened up, but it, it might be closed for you, so open up the AdWords sub-tab and click on the Campaigns menu. This campaigns report is the broadest level of AdWords data, and it's the best place to begin. The first thing I see is that there isn't any AdWords click data from April and beyond. This is most likely due to the AdWords campaigns being paused at that time. I personally like to analyze date ranges that have data, so I'll change my date range um, to end at around April 1st. And I'll hit apply. Now I can see a more coherent stretch of time. So this report down here shows me the top 10 AdWords campaigns sorted by default by clicks. Down below, I see that there are 20 campaigns in total. So I'll change my show rows selector to 25 so I can get a complete view of all the campaigns that have been active. Generally, the first thing I do now is calculate ROI and ROAS, which is return on ad spend, using the revenue and cost columns. But for now, let's say I want to get a sense of which products are converting the most. I know that this campaign here called Promo High Margin PL1s has the most clicks, transactions, and revenue, so I'll jump into this campaign first by clicking on its name. That brings me to the next level in the default analytics taxonomy, which is the ad group report for the ad groups inside this one campaign. I see over here that there's one active ad group, so I'll click the name of the ad group to get the report we're looking for which is the keywords report. A good thing to keep in mind is that when we're analyzing Google shopping campaigns, formerly known as product listing ads, the item ID number is considered the keyword. If this was a traditional search campaign, we'd be seeing actual keywords in this column. I wanna know which products have sold the most or which specific product has sold the most. So I'll sort this report by the transactions column by clicking on the transactions column header. Okay, so now I see that item ID 68060 has converted the most since the beginning of the year from AdWords. Remember, I don't necessarily know if this item is our client's hottest selling product overall. I just know that this item has sold the most from paid traffic. The first thing I want to know is what this product is. Analytics doesn't tell us this in this report, so the easiest way to see this is by simply going to their website and searching for this item ID. So I'll copy the item ID over here. I'll open up their website and I will type in the, paste in the product ID number and hit search. So I know that this item ID 68060 is the thermal fleecy pet cave. And now I'm gonna jump back into analytics. I, now I can understand the report in more context and I also know that we've sold 111 of the, thermal, of the thermal fleecy pet caves during our selected date range. And those 111 transactions generated 2,225 pounds in revenue. And here's where things get a little bit interesting. There's another report in analytics that will show us data on items sold. That report is the product's performance report, and it's an indispensable tool when analyzing both shopping campaigns and traditional search and display e-commerce campaigns. I want to keep this current campaign open, this current report open, so I'll just duplicate this tab. To get to the product's performance report, scroll to the very bottom of the left side navigation menu and click on conversions. Open up the e-commerce submenu and click on product performance. By default, analytics will sort the products by quantity sold. Because I'm only concerned with analyzing AdWords data right now, 
I want to make sure that I filter this report for AdWords sessions only. The easiest and most flexible way to do that is by clicking on Add Segment up here and selecting Paid Traffic. I could view the paid traffic report alongside the All Sessions reports, but, but for the sake of just analyzing AdWords data, leaving the All Sessions segment would just make the reporting more confusing. So I'll remove the All Sessions report by clicking on the arrow in the, in the upper right-hand corner of the All Sessions segment and clicking Remove. Click Apply, and now we have the Product Performance Report segmented out just by paid traffic. Because I know that the item ID we were looking at before is called the Thermal Fleecy Pet Cave, there's no need to switch my primary dimension. But if I didn't know the name of my product, I could easily switch the report view by selecting product skew over here by primary dimension. Sorted by quantity, I see that the item ID we were looking for, 68060, 167 individual units through 146 unique purchases. That simply means that there were customers who ordered more than one fleecy pet cave at a time. That's valuable information in and of itself because it gives us an idea as to what kind of product this is and the consumer behavioral patterns. More importantly though, we're seeing a discrepancy in the data. In this report, analytics is telling us that there were 146 unique purchases or transactions for the fleecy pet cave. And if you remember over here in our AdWords report, there was just 111 transactions for the same exact product. 35 sales of this product seem to have been left out of the AdWords report. So what's going on? We know we're looking at the same date range, and we also know that we're looking at only paid search over here in our product performance report. Well, there are two answers to this question, and you should take a couple minutes yourself to think about it if you don't already have the answers. The first and more obvious answer is that we're only viewing data in that one AdWords campaign in this AdWords report. In other words, maybe the Fleecy Pet Cave converted in some of the other AdWords campaigns. To determine how many transactions of an individual product there were across all the shopping campaigns, we go back over to the acquisition section in the panel and we click shopping campaigns instead of just regular campaigns to open up the shopping campaigns report. We see a similar view than what we were looking at before, but now we're going to add keyword which as you recall is really item ID in shopping campaign jargon as a secondary dimension. So click on the secondary dimension menu and start typing in keyword. So navigate down to keyword and hit enter. Now that we've applied our secondary dimension of keyword, we see that there are 417 individual item IDs to sort through. So instead of reviewing them one by one, we can apply an advanced filter to only show us the data on the product ID we want. Sorting by transactions helps me find the item ID I'm looking for. I'll copy the item ID number, click on advanced to the right of the search bar. I'll set up my filter to include keyword containing and I'll paste in my product ID and I'll hit apply. Now that I've set up my advanced filter, I'm able to see across all the campaigns that have been active, all shopping campaigns that have been active, where this item ID has sold and how many times it's sold. This report now shows me that there was indeed one conversion from a different campaign on this product. So while that did account for one transaction in the discrepancy between reports, there are still 34 transactions that remain unaccounted for. So what's going on? The answer is that these reports assess the data in fundamentally different ways. The product performance report is only concerned with the sales of the product. The report itself is not concerned about the source of the traffic that led to the sale. So although we created a custom segment that filtered out any traffic except for paid traffic, which means traffic that came via AdWords in our case, the report will still show us all products sold that came from AdWords regardless which ad or PLA the traffic came from. The AdWords report, on the other hand, is very much concerned with the ad click that sent the traffic and will only show sales of a product that originated from a click on an ad of that same product. For example, say someone searched Google for big button mobile phones, which happens to be another product that this client sells, and say Google served them an ad for the mobile phone. So the searcher clicks the ad, comes to the site, 
and decided to also buy the fleecy pet cave when he or she saw it promoted as a sale item, let's say. In that scenario, the AdWords report will not show a conversion for the fleecy pet cave because the AdWords report is not a product report. The AdWords report at the item ID level is going to show us transactions of a product that resulted from an AdWords click on an ad for that product. However, because the traffic source of that click was in fact paid search, the product performance report will show a conversion for that item ID. The product performance report cares only about products sold, not the traffic source. Our paid traffic segment does force the product performance report to care about traffic source, but it doesn't view the individual ad as a qualifier for sales statistics. If we change around our scenario a little bit, and instead of mobile phones, the customer initially searched Google for fleece dog cave, and they were served the fleecy dog cave ad, and then they converted from the ad click, both the AdWords report and the product performance report would post the sale as a conversion. So now we can make perfect sense of our data. We know that 34 of our fleecy pet cave sales were what we call cross sales. Someone came to the website through an ad for another for a, someone came to the website through an ad for another product and decided to also or only buy the fleecy pet cave. That's why we see 112 conversions or 112 transactions in the AdWords report and 146 transactions in our product performance report segmented by paid search. The next thing I'd want to figure out is which specific product ads are leading people to also buy the Fleecy Pet Cave. Or in other words, which product ads are assisting the Fleecy Pet Cave conversion. There's a great way to take a look at that cross-sale conversion path, and we'll cover it in a separate video. But I hope this helps you understand more about the nature of the different analytics reports. And please don't hesitate to leave your comments and questions below. I'll be sure to get back to you. To get notified when we release new analytics and AdWords tutorials, don't forget to subscribe below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.